Lord be with you. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Please join me in prayer. Lord, thank you so much for this time together. We ask you to bless us and guide us as we learn together. In Jesus' name, amen. Our story today is number 39, Paul's Shipwreck, published by Baker Books and copyrighted by Godly Clay. Today we are in the season of Pentecost. It is the time when we think more and more about people believing in Jesus. Paul had gone to many cities and towns telling others about Jesus. Many, many people believed. But there were some people who did not like Paul telling others about Jesus. When Paul came to Jerusalem, the people who did not like Jesus or Paul had Paul arrested and put in prison. Paul was in prison for a long time. Finally, they decided to send him to trial in Rome, the capital city, and the most important city in that part of the world at the time. The city of Rome was far away, and Paul needed to ride on a boat to get there. So Paul and some soldiers and others got on the boat and began the trip to Rome. Slowly, slowly, the boat moved through the water. Since it was a sailboat, it needed wind to move, and there was not much wind when Paul and the others left the land. At a harbor called Fair Havens, Paul said to the others, We need to stay here. If we go on, we will have problems. We may lose the cargo, the ship, and even our lives. But the others paid no attention. But the others paid no attention to Paul. They wanted to continue sailing. When a gentle wind began blowing, the sailors decided to sail. But soon, a very strong wind began blowing. The wind caught the boat and blew it out to sea. The next day, as the waves rose higher, the sailors began throwing the goods carried in the boat overboard into the sea. The next day, they threw into the sea the things needed to run the boat and everything else they could lay their hands on. The storm continued for days. No one could see the sun or the stars. No one ate anything. Finally, Paul called everyone together and said, Eat something. You need the strength. No one will die. Last night, an angel of God came to me and said, Don't be afraid, Paul. You will get to Rome. No one will die, but the ship will be wrecked. Then Paul took some bread and gave thanks to God. He broke a piece off and ate it. Everyone else ate too. The ship ran aground near an island. The bow of the ship stuck in the sand while the stern broke into pieces. Everyone who could swim swam to shore. Others grabbed pieces of wood from the ship to help keep them afloat until they got to shore. Everyone was safe, just as Paul was, had said. The ship and the goods carried in the boat were lost, but not one person died. The ship and all the goods carried in the boat were lost, but not one person died. The people on the island were very kind to the people from the boat. They built a fire so everyone could get warm. As Paul was helping to gather sticks, a poisonous snake bit him, and everyone was afraid he would die from the poison. But Paul shook the snake off his hand into the fire, and nothing happened. Paul began telling everyone about Jesus. In Jesus' name, he made sick people well again. Paul and the others stayed on the island for three months. 
and then sailed on another boat for Rome. And there Paul told even more people about Jesus. I wonder how Paul felt when he was arrested for telling other people about Jesus. I wonder how Paul felt during the storm. I wonder how the others felt during the storm. I wonder what will happen to Paul in Rome. What do you wonder about? You can talk about that with your family. In the book of Acts, chapter 27, we hear this. When a gentle south wind began to blow, they saw their opportunity. So they weighed anchor and sailed along the shore of Crete. Before very long, a wind of hurricane force called the Northeaster swept down from the island. We took such a violent battering from the storm that the next day they began to throw the cargo overboard. On the third day they threw the ship's tackle overboard with their own hands. When neither sun nor stars appeared for many days and the storm continued raging, we finally gave up all hope of being saved. After they had gone a long time without food, Paul stood up before them and said, Men, you should have taken my advice not to sail from Crete and you would have spared yourself this damage and loss. But now I urge you to keep up your courage, because not one of you will be lost. Only the ship will be destroyed. Last night, an angel of the God to whom I belong and whom I serve stood beside me and said, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand trial before Caesar, and God has graciously, graci and God has graciously given you the lives of all who sail with you. So keep up your courage, men. For I have faith in God that it will happen just as he told me. Nevertheless, we must run aground on some island. When the daylight came, they did not recognize the land, but they saw a bay with a sandy beach where they decided to run the ship aground if they could. Cutting loose the anchors, they left them in the sea, and at the same time they untied the ropes that held the rudders. Then they hoisted the foresail to the wind and made for the beach. But the ship struck a sandbar and ran aground. The bow struck fast and would not move, and the stern was broken to pieces by the pounding of the surf. The soldiers planned to kill the prisoners to prevent any of them from swimming away and escaping. But the centurion wanted to spare Paul's life and kept them from carrying out their plan. He ordered those who could swim to jump overboard first and get to land. The rest were to get there on planks or in other pieces of the ship. In this way, Everyone reached land safely. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who have sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Go now in peace. Go now in peace. May 